morning, Agape. Thank you for joining us. We are blessed to be here. I guess you can see that we are totally virtual today, and we will be totally virtual for probably the next uh, three Sundays or the uh, for the rest of this month, simply because of this virus and how contagious it is. And I, I'm just concerned in my spirit to make sure that I am very aware and take care of all of you as much as possible. So uh, the Lord just put it in my spirit to guide me to say for the rest of this month, we're just going to be totally virtual. I, I want the best for you. And I hope you understand my love for you. Oh, but I'm still excited because the word is still the word. And wherever you receive it, it's still valid and it still has power. There's power in the word of God. So thank you for joining us uh, live and those who will join us later on through the week or tonight when you review this or view it. Uh, I just praise God that the word will be a blessing to your life. Let's pray. Eternal God, we are grateful for this time and God, we just believe that something good is going to happen through the word of God, that it will fall fresh. It will prick someone's soul, someone's heart and make a difference. And God, we stand on the anticipation that something great is getting ready to happen. In Jesus name, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Oh, beloved, I'm so excited about what the word is going to be. Turn with me this morning to... Uh, the book of Matthew, or God, Matthew's gospel, the gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, and verses 37 through 38. Uh, the gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter, beginning with the 37th and the 38th verse. And we're reading from the New King James Version. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. I, I want to call your attention this morning to this thought, all of you, all of you. I'm here to share with you this morning. God wants all of you. Yes, he does. Do you realize, beloved, that sometimes our priorities are not God first? Oh, I better say that again. I'm, I'm getting ready to move in here. Sometimes our priorities are not God first. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about those who, who profess to be sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized, those who, who praise and worship, those who come consistently, those who do. Sometimes our, our priorities are not God first. Uh, in other words, beloved, there are some things that are, are more important than God. Mm. Sometimes we make other things more important than God. God is in the picture, but he's second, or he's third, or he's fourth, but he's not number one. There, there are some things, but maybe it's our possessions. Maybe there are some things that you have finally possessed or you're trying to, to get your hands on that is your priority in life. It is your priority. I've got to get it. I've got to buy this. I've got to have it. Maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's education or, or other things that you say, I've got. These are the priorities in my life. Everything else is secondary. Even God is secondary because my focus is on what I think is my number one priority in this life. And in other words, let me, let, me, let me make this very plain. We love other things more than we love God sometimes. Well, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, we love some other things. I, 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 I love money, and, 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 but there's nothing wrong with that. I want to work hard to make all I can, 
But 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 the evil part is, is that I put it as priority. I can put it as priority. Or you may put it as a priority. So we've got to put things in the proper place. We, we love other things sometimes more than we love God. Yeah, I know I'm right, but think about this. Maybe you might know somebody. Maybe, maybe it may be you. It might be you that, that, that everything else you got, you had your focus on something so, so much that it took priority in your life. It became first, whether it was your job, whether it was your possessions, maybe your strive for education, maybe whatever you were striving for, it became priority and God became secondary. Well, yeah. You, you, you love, you, you, the scripture said, you shall love the Lord your God. That's what the text says. You shall love the Lord your God. What, what is love? Love is a strong affection. Yeah, it, love is a strong affection. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. You, 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 you were in love. You said you were in love. Something happened. Oh, maybe, maybe there's somebody out there that you can just touch yourself, raise your hand, say, Pastor, you, you're talking about me. Yeah, love, love is a strong affection. It, love will mess you up. Your affection can, can cause you to do some things you said you'd never do. That, that, that affection, it's a strong, it, it, it'll draw you, it will pull you in when your love, when that affection hits. This text this morning in Matthew is, the, is about a relationship with God, giving God all of you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a relationship. And, and many of us know some things about a relationship. God, God doesn't want a part-time relationship. He, he doesn't want to be a, a sometime lover, a every now and then relationship. And you know what? You know what, beloved? Sometimes we treat God like we treat other things. It, it's a part-time thing. Some, some, some folks only have a part-time relationship with God because the only time they talk about God or, or do anything toward God is on Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what, what this text is talking about is talking about a total commitment to God. Oh, yeah. he, he wants all of you, all of me, all of you. God doesn't want us to call him just when we need something. That's, that's fair weather. He wants to talk. To him, he wants us to talk to him all of the time. Oh yeah, this is about a relationship. He wants all of you, all of us, totally committed. And, and you know what? It's a hard thing for some folks to do, to be totally committed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the text this morning is about a relationship. So, I want to I want to look at some things in the text with our time this morning uh, about all of you. He wants all of you, not just some. And that and that's a dilemma for some folks. That that's going to be a challenge for some folks because some folks have themselves, as Grandmama used to say, spread out pretty thin. You're connected over here. You're connected over here. This is a priority on Monday. This is a priority on Tuesday. This is a priority on Wednesday. God is only priority on Sunday. And then really, you complain about that. God wants all of us. He, he wants all of us all of the time. So we want to deal with this this morning. All of you. That's, that's what he wants. He wants to look at all of you. You. So here's the first thing I want to look at this morning when the text talks about all of me. It talks about the love of God. Here's the first thing. He wants all of your heart. He wants all of your heart. All of you first deals with all of your heart. Philippians 4 and 7 says, 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's a, oh, Paul says that. So when you give all of your heart to God, guess what happens? You stop worrying about all that you can't control. Oh, oh my God, oh my God. That that will get you up from the kitchen table. That will allow you to go to bed at night. That will allow you not to have stress on your life when you realize the connection. All of you, first, if you want to give all of you, what God says first, I got to have all of your heart. Let me read with Paul. Paul says this again. Paul says in Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, and the peace of God. If you want to have peace, which, which transcends all understanding, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It comes down to this, beloved. When you give your heart to God, you stop worrying about what you can't control. Oh, I, I hear a shout across the Birmingham. I hear a shout this morning. Somebody says, thank you for the delivery. Thank you for the affirmation. Thank you for the confirmation, Pastor Witt, because I know what I need to do to stop worrying about stuff I can't control. Isn't it amazing how, how, how people can worry about stuff that they can't change? How many of you have, have paced the floor at night? How many of you have worried yourself sick over something you can't control? You see, you see when, 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 when you give your heart to God, when your heart is totally committed to God, you begin to slow down and begin to trust. Oh, that's the key. That's why some folks say, why aren't you upset? Why aren't you losing your mind? Because I've given my heart totally to God. And so I can slow down now and begin to trust him. You see, I can let stuff now, check this out, roll off my back. Things that used to weigh me down don't weigh me down any longer. Why? Because my heart is totally committed to God. I trust him. So I stop worrying about things I can't control. Here's the key. Now understand how simple this is, beloved. Things I control, I don't worry about. Things that I can control, I don't worry about. Why would I? I I'm in control. But the things I can't control, that's, that's the caveat here that, that gets me to this other level. The things I can't control, I don't worry about it. So they roll off my back. Things roll off my back now. Stuff rolls off my back now because I stop worrying about it. He says, he says, well, all of your heart. That's what he said. What he said. He says, all of your heart. That's that's the point. He wants all of your heart. You see, you see, let's understand. The heart represents the central wisdom of feeling. See, I feel with my heart. So my heart represents the central wisdom of feeling as opposed to head wisdom of reason. Now, now, now understand what I'm trying to say. See, my head has this kind of wisdom that reasons something. I think it out. And, but my heart has is the central wisdom of feeling. My head may say one thing, but my heart is saying something different. Oh yeah, yeah. My head says, "Don't, don't, don't. Uh, you got to figure that out, with You got to figure this out. You've got to sit up all night long and cross the T's and dot the I's and make sure everything. Else. You got to add it up. It's got to come out with reasoning. That's my mind. But my heart says, I walk by faith, not by sight. I've done all the reasoning I can do, but now my heart says, trust, trust in God." Lean not on to your own understanding and in all thy ways acknowledge him. There are some things that move in my heart that my head cannot come to reason with. 
Maybe there's somebody out there right now. Uh, everybody looked at your situation. People looked up and down it, and, and the reason, the head reason and said, oh, it ain't going to work out. They don't make no sense. They stupid. They shouldn't do that. But your heart says, well, I'm trusting in God. My heart says, I'm leaning on God. My heart says, let him guide my ways and order my footsteps. Oh, thank God for the central reason and wisdom of feeling. Thank God there's something that the Spirit moves in our heart into a lie that tell us, don't let your head write a check. It can't cash. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, so it's good to have a head wisdom, a reason, but there's a heart. When, you, when your heart is being given to God, totally, it makes a difference. See, your heart represents compassion and understanding. Your heart is a symbol of love and the seat of emotions and affection. It means to love with all of your emotional feeling and with your devotion. There, there are some times, there are some times we don't love with all of our emotions to God. We, we hold back. We, we hold back and, and, and see, see, we're not as devoted to God as we should be. Uh, because why? Because we haven't given him all of our heart. That, that, that's, that's, that's the key. It's about trusting God enough to open your heart up to all of your insecurities, to all of your weaknesses, and know that God is not going to use you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He says, he says, says, I want all of you, all of you. And, and the first point of that is what? To, to love me with all of your heart. Oh, my God, my God, my God. That, that's, that's, that's why some folk are, are, are stuck in the situation. They've come to Christ, but the key is they won't trust Christ. They won't give him their total heart simply because they're still living on a relationship that hurt them. My God, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. You, you can't love God the way you need to love God because you're still holding uh, some old grudges, some hurt, yesteryear's hurt onto the present relationship with Christ. Oh my God, I, I want you starting today to be able to stop worrying about some things that you can't control. Oh, can I get a amen? Can I get a witness? I'm going to stop worrying. 2022, I am going to stop worrying about some things that I can't control. And the reason is not because my, my head wisdom, a reason, because I'm giving my heart totally to God. I'm giving it totally to God. So he says here, he says here, he, he, he wants all of our hearts. All right. Here's the second thing that I want to look at. It says, with all of your heart. What else, what else does he want when he says all of you? He says, I need all of your soul. Not just a heart, but I need your soul. You see, the soul is a part of the heart. I better say that again. The heart or the soul is a part of the heart. If someone says, you have no soul, then there is a, you, your heart is messed up because the soul is a part of the heart. They are connected. God created our soul so we could express him. Now, from the heart, the soul manifests what's in your heart. So if my heart is messed up, then my soul expresses a messed up soul. But if my heart is right, and I realize God created my soul so we could express him or I could express him, I can't express him until my heart has been given totally to him. See, see, man, man, man fell, man fell. He fell in the garden, he has fallen, we have fallen through life. And when we fall, we tend to express ourselves 
our opinions, our feelings, our decisions apart from God. You see, when you when, when a person falls, they, they look for all these excuses. And we express our uh, our opinion. We say, I would have been, but because this went down, that, that's why I haven't been here. That's why I haven't done what I should be doing. My, uh, my feeling, hey, this, is, this is why. Yeah. How many times do you know someone or have you known someone who, who, who separated themselves from God and then blamed God? And something happened and they blamed God. They chose certain things, certain, made certain decisions, and then they blamed God and tried to say, well, you know, that's why, that's why I'm like this. You know? Uh, that's why I'm not here, because God let this happen. It, 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 their decisions were apart from God. But, look, but when we turn our hearts to the Lord, to the Lord, our love for him grows. You see, when I turn my heart to him, then, then I, I, I know what it feels like, and I understand what God is doing, because God is working on me. And the more I turn over, God begins to do, the more I love him. I, my love grows on him. My love for him grows. See, see, my, my, the love, his love with our love for him grows. See, that's, that's when I understand how much God loves me when I, when I give my heart and my soul to him. Then I realize he's not just lip service. He loves me and I love him back. And the thing I've realized is that the more he loves me, the more I love him, and I can't, I love him. You ever been around somebody that you were mad with, and all they did was just love on you? And the more they loved on you, the more you fought it until you couldn't fight it any longer? That God just loves us. His love is, it goes beyond. And so when he loves me and I love him, my love for him begins to grow even more. That's why many of us would tell, tell folks, can't nobody do me like the Lord. When we love with our heart, we begin to love him with our soul. Oh, check that out. You see, you can't love him with your soul first, then your heart. It starts with your heart. And, and that's an that's indication right there. When you love him with your heart, you will begin to love him with your soul. Your life begins to transform. But it starts with your heart and moves you yourself because the soul is connected. Now look, look what happens. Look what happens when, when you love him with your soul. Guess what happens? His thoughts becomes your thoughts. His feelings become your feelings. His decisions become your decisions. Look, look, look what I'm trying to just break this down. You see, because I love him with my heart, because now my soul is connected with him. Everything God does, I'm in agreement with. Even when it doesn't look like it's in my favor, I'm still in agreement with him because God is doing a new work. His thoughts become my thoughts. His feelings become my feelings. His decisions become my decisions. And as he does his transforming work in us, we spontaneously begin to express God and glorify him. Look, look what I'm trying to say. Because we are connected from the heart and the soul, when God begins to move and he's moving in your life, things are beginning to change. Something happens where you spontaneously, spontaneously mean it's not planned. You spontaneously begin to express God and glorify God. That's when sometimes you have to take a break and begin just to tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for doing what you do. God, thank you for opening up the door. God, thank you for looking over me. God, thank you for being better to me than I've been to myself. Oh, yes. That's why some folks all of a sudden, they spontaneously, they just break out. When I think about the goodness of God and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. God, you're an awesome God. God, you keep making a way out of no way. Oh, it's spontaneous. We spontaneously express and glorify him. You say, I can't help but glorify him. Something comes over when I think about all he keeps doing. Something happens to me, and I begin just to say, Lord, thank you. So I speak it. Oh, because why? There is a connection. 
The love of my heart and the love of my soul are connected. And now I begin to see what God is doing. And my love for him grows even stronger because of the connection. And when you love God with your soul, you can't help but express and glorify God. I can't keep it. I, can't, I said I wasn't going to say anything. I said I wasn't going to do anything. But I couldn't keep it to myself. Because it's overflowing. It's like, it's like a dam getting ready to burst. The water is pushing against it. They're trying to hold it back, but they're beginning to have cracks in, in, the, in, the, in the dam. And the water is bursting because why? It's so strong. There is somebody listening to me this morning, somebody who is watching, that you're at the point that you need to break out and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. You've been trying to hold it back, trying to keep your composure, but for what God has done for you, you've got to let it out. Oh yeah, as he does his transforming work in us, we spontaneously express God and glorify him. He wants your soul. He wants all of us. All of me. See, all of me is just not going through some motions. It's a lifestyle. It's a commitment. It's a relationship. And when you give all of yourself, you see, this thing about loving God is not a 50-50 love. God, I'll give you 50. You give me 50. That equals up 100. It's not 70-30, 60-40. It's 100% of you. He wants all of you. And that's the key that many, many of the believers are missing. We've got to get to a point of giving God all of us, all of you, all of me. That's when God begins to do what he does. That's when God begins to take control. And I'm here to tell you, when you give God all of you, your heart and your soul, guess what? God protects you. God keeps you covered. God does some things that only God can do. Wouldn't it be good just to be able to let things go that you can control and doesn't phase you? It won't bother you? How many times have we been so concerned about stuff that you can't control? How many times have you, you worried about what somebody thought about you? And, and, and you tried to live up to their standards and, and, and found out hey, that wasn't even good enough. And every time somebody looked at you or said something, it bothered you because you got so caught up on something you can't control. I'm here to tell I've learned through my ministry to stop worrying about folk what they say or think, and things I can't control. Let go and let God. That ought to be your theme. Let go and let God. That ought to be your theme for this year. Let go and let God. I ain't worried about it. I'm not going to worry about something I can't control. I, I can't control this virus. I can't control how it's working, But so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do what God says do, and I'm going to live. I'm not going to worry about it. There are things in your life, beloved, that you need to let go and let God. There are some things that you need to let go so you can sleep at night, so you can stop worrying about it. You can't control it. And the reason why you're so caught up about trying to control something you can't control, because your relationship with God, here, I'm going to mess somebody up, is not where it needs to be. But yeah, yeah, it's your relationship. It's, it's, it's your relationship. Your relation your relationship is not solid. And you've got to get your heart first right with God. And right with God is not just telling God, God, I'm sorry. It's about giving him my heart. All of me. Because I can't praise him like I should until my heart is right. Because my soul will only express what my heart is like. Or where my heart is. Check that out. That's going to help somebody. Your soul would never be able to express 
what it needs to express or the way, the way it should express until your heart is right. Whatever your heart is, that's what your soul expresses. He wants all of you. It's about a relationship. It's about a love relationship. Here's the last thing I want to share with you this morning. He wants all your heart. He wants all of your soul. Here's the third thing he wants. He wants all of your mind. He wants all of your mind. That, that's, 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 that's deep. He, he, he wants all of your mind. He's talking about all of me. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your, your, your what do you say? Your, your heart, your soul, and your mind. You see, see, I want to show you a connection. See, see, you, it starts with the heart. Give them totally, total, a total commitment of our heart. Our soul is, is attached to the heart. It expresses what the heart is. Our mind is the leading part of our soul. See, our mind, our mind is the leading part of our soul. It's directing the rest of our being. Woo! Mm. Our mind is the leading part of our soul, and it's di directing the rest of our being. Now, now, you already know what I'm saying. If, you're, if, 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 if the mind is leading the soul, and it's not right, and everything else is not connecting right, you're in trouble. You see, you see, the ability to reason, understand, perceive things, it can be set on many things, but God wants it to be set on the spirit. Ooh. So your mind has, has, has a decision to make. It has a decision to make. Either uh, when I understand, my mind has the ability to, to receive reason, to understand, to perceive many things, to, to, to be set on many things. That, that's my mind. It makes that decision. But what God wants it is to everything to be set on the spirit. Now, now let me say, now look, my mind is the ability. I'm a pretty smart person. And I can sit here and reason everything. And that's, that's, that's the reasoning of my mind. But he said, now, if you set your mind on the spirit, Oh, oh, my goodness. My, look what it says in Romans 8 and 6. 8 and 6 says this. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. When I let my mind begin to reason on the earthly things and how I should do it, then guess what? My results are earthly. Oh, that's what it says. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Can I make a clear understanding? Just because you come to church, just because you participate in the church uh, functions and the service does not mean that you're not thinking flesh of the flesh. Oh, I better say that again. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. You can come to church and still be setting your mind to the things of the flesh. He said, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. She said, oh, oh my goodness. So one way to set your mind on the spirit, because that's the key. How do I set my mind on the spirit when I'm living in the world? He said, Here, here's what is to read your Bible with an open heart. She said, sometimes when we read, we're, we're reading for, for a certain conclusion. We're reading for a certain conclusion. That's why it's very, uh, very, very, very dangerous for folks to quote, misquote scripture, to take scripture out of the context of what's going on. You, you have to learn to read the Bible with an open mind. Let me, let me ask this question. Who's controlling your mind? Oh, oh, who's controlling your mind? Who's controlling your mind? You see, the enemy is after your mind. 
The enemy knows. He, God knows. If the enemy is in charge of your mind, you check this out. You will self destruct. There used to be a, used to be a TV show back when ago called Mission Impossible, and, and 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 the character would be sitting somewhere, and he would have a tape recorder, and would play the tape, and it, and it had his mission on there, and it was a Mission Impossible. But after it, it said this will self destruct, and it would burn up. The tape would. No record of it. Who's controlling your mind this morning? Because the enemy is after your mind. And God knows if the enemy is in charge of your mind, you will self-destruct. It's like the old thing I tell folks. Don't shoot yourself in the foot and tell somebody it was a drive-by shooting. It's self-destruction. Isaiah 26 and 3. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So the key this morning, he wants your mind. He wants your mind. Because that's the mind is the leading part of the soul. It's directing the rest of our being. And when you move out of the out of the line or out of the will of God, it's your mind who has decided, who's perceived many things to do this way. And it's simply because you have not set your mind on the spirit of God. Oh my God, my God, he wants all of me. He wants all of you. Philippians 4 and 8, we should focus on whatever things are true, noble, pure, lovely, and of good report. Meditate on these things. As we go through this year, we go through day to day, I want you to remember, he wants all of you. He wants all of you, beloved. And when he has all of you, which is the first commandment, oh, I'm here to tell you the best is yet to come. I want you to stop worrying about some things, things that you can't control. Let go and let God. This is the year of let go and let God. I'm not worried about it any longer. I'm not going to lose no sleep over this. I'm giving him my all. He wants all of me. No more part-time. I'm 100% in it to win it with God. Oh, God bless you. God, thank you. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. Oh, thank you for... Uh, listening to the word of God as God has shared the word with you this morning. And I'm here to just invite anyone, wherever you may be, if you're connecting with us and you don't know who Jesus is, I want to recommend him to you this morning. Oh, he's a wonderful savior. He loves you. Here's the first thing you need to do is first to acknowledge that you are a sinner not saved by grace. I'm a sinner, but I'm saved. The second thing is to acknowledge that you believe that Jesus died for your sins. And because he died, he's offering you an opportunity for eternal life. And the third thing is to understand he's knocking at the door of your heart. He wants to come in and make a difference. But all you have to do is open the door of your heart and invite him in. Lord, will you come into my life? I want you to become my savior. I'm a sinner. And if I die tonight, I will spend my eternity in hell. Will you come in? And beloved, he will. I'm a living witness. He will. And as you give him your life, all of you, your heart, your soul, and your mind, he will guide you. He will keep you.
Oh, God bless you. And then maybe there's someone who's watching this morning and you're searching for a place to call home. We invite you to come be a part of us, whether it's in person or virtually. Our address is across the screen screen at the bottom and, and you can contact us. and We'll contact you back. God bless you. God keep you. Beloved, thank you. It's been, it's been, it's been something. It's been a new normal. Thank you for your commitment, for staying connected. Thank you for your consistency in giving back to God, because that's your commitment was to God, not to us, not to me, not to Agape, but to God. Thank you, because I know based upon your commitment, God is still blessing you and opening up doors and doing things that only God can do. So I praise you. We love you. Thank you. For those who do your love gifts or whatever you do, thank you so much. You don't have to, and I appreciate it. I send my love to you. Blessings upon your life. God bless you. Continue to connect with us uh, on our Tuesdays, uh, Zoom, our Wednesday, the Word on uh, Wednesday, our Saturday morning Bible study. And for right now on Sunday mornings, totally virtually, but I'm looking. I'm looking at the, the numbers and we're, we're going to make decisions based upon what's going on. And then hopefully uh, 1st of February, we'll be back in as we were prior, uh, those who would like to come. But I just want to be safe and please understand my love for you, uh, my, my feeling and belief of what God wants me to do to protect his sheep. You're his sheep of his pasture. I'm the under shepherd. And so I'm, I'm listening to God. And my care for you is not just spiritual, but it's emotional, physical, and everything else. Take care of yourself. God bless you. Please continue to pray for those uh, that, that may be sick, those who may be lost, those who are struggling. Continue to pray and lift up, because I believe the prayers of the righteous avail much. Let's pray. Eternal God, we are grateful for this time of teaching. We thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your word this morning. God, we pray for blessings upon each person that is connected with us. God, cover them and keep them. God, we love you. We honor you for who you are and what you are in our life. God, we praise you. If we had 10,000 tongues to praise your name, that would not be enough. Oh, God, thank you. Glory, we thank you right now. Now may the grace of God bless you and keep you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and keep you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you again. God bless you. I love you. My wife sends her love to you. Stay safe in G smart and spiritually smart. Oh, God bless you. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for the eyes of, of seeing and our ears of heard. God, we pray now that you continue to deliver us, to heal us, to cause breakthrough for us. God, we'll always give you the praise. Now may the grace of God bless you and keep you. May God lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace both now and forevermore, that every heart say, amen. God bless you. My wife sends her love to you. We'll see you soon. Be blessed. Jesus, whoever's listening, Please cover them today, I pray. Jesus, whoever's watching, please protect them along the way. Wherever they go, please go with them. And let your grace and mercy follow them. I pray for favor. Unusual favor and healing, supernatural healing and blessings to overtake them. This is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for you. When the day comes to an end, I pray, my friend. You'll say, God did it. Amen.